This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. All right, here we are. Today is less technical, I guess. I don't have some sort of expose on corrupt practices or a deep dive into some obscure topic. Today, I just have Ubisoft. Long ago, in what seems like a distant age of video games, Electronic Arts was the main stage bad guy. It feels like a different world almost. A lifetime has passed, but back then, EA was dominating the news cycle day in and day out for being the absolute worst. I still remember the veritable hurricane of bad news in the wake of Star Wars Battlefront 2, when international governing agencies began to look at video games because EA decided that loot boxes were worth polluting one of the most popular franchises in history. Long story short, you would be hard-pressed a couple of years ago to find someone who didn't agree that EA was the worst publisher in the industry, but today it feels like that atmosphere has changed. EA has been quiet recently. Sure, they said some dumb things on their social media profiles and got memed into oblivion by the online community regarding single-player games, but compared to what they could be doing, that's not so bad. However, in a world where video games have gone almost entirely digital, with proprietary storefront access that allows for cheaper distribution of freely produced online keys, therefore allowing publishers to harvest a much larger percentage of the profits, which makes it so that the rise from $60 to $70 for AAA video games is completely ludicrous and unnecessary, I have a video on that, did in the past, but anyway, there is another publisher that has stepped up to the plate and has rapidly cemented itself as one of the worst bad faith actors in the industry, probably the worst actor in the industry, and it's rather intense to say that because I used to say a few years ago that they were one of the better ones, but here we are. That publisher is obviously Ubisoft, and today I want to discuss some of their most recent blunders as well as examine precisely what they just did a couple of days ago that has finally earned them the title of worst publisher in the industry. Let's begin with some backstory on crypto. Crypto in gaming makes absolutely no sense. Every single mechanism that crypto bros will try to say is revolutionary either cannot exist already exists or has existed in a better format without crypto and blockchain. Example, there's this asinine belief that if you use blockchain, you can just pick up an asset from one game and then use it in another. You can have your little monkey picture from a, for a character on Fortnite or Minecraft or Call of Duty or use it in Facebook's metaverse, any of it. Your little monkey picture can go everywhere. This one is hilarious because no, you can't. Assets are not universally compatible. Thousands of people would have to work millions of hours for free in order to provide a fraction of that possibility to a tiny fragment of the industry, and it's just not going to happen, nor should it. Strike one. Another example? Crypto and blockchain let you create a second-hand market or a second-hand economy. Wouldn't it be nice to have the option of selling your NFT to someone else? Wouldn't it be nice to make real money? Yeah, gaming already has that. Some sanctioned, some illegal, second-hand economies in video games are thriving. Look at Valve, Steam, and CSGO. Massive secondhand skin economies that facilitate pretty much everything that is supposedly going to be made possible by blockchain. How about Diablo 3? The real money auction house was another example of creating in-game economies that hinge on actual money, and it got taken out of the game because everyone hated it so much. Strike 2. Example 3, even if it's a bit abstract, is ownership. Imagine, what if you actually owned your character because of NFTs? Wow! Yeah. Gaming already has a system where that's possible, to a degree, and that would not functionally change with a game-specific blockchain system. Right now, your items are your items. They sit on an account that you have access to, with login credentials. And if you get banned by the publisher or they decide to take that access away, tough luck. This would not change just because the publisher decides to use blockchain. You will not have guaranteed access in perpetuity. You will have, go figure, login credentials to access their system or their auction site, whatever it is, and your items are then, what, tracked by blockchain? Okay. To facilitate an economy that could already exist and has existed without it? Yeah, strike three. Bottom line, crypto in gaming is categorically useless. It has no purpose, no value, no actual benefit to the product, and every single thing that it might become integrated for is already possible or has been done numerous times in the past. And yet, Ubisoft has decided to go all in. All right, pause. Video sponsor time. I'm happy to say that the sponsor is, once again, Surfshark. And the reason I'm happy to say that is because having the right VPN has never been more important than it is right now. Without being too specific here, the ability to circumvent censorship and content suppression is more critical than ever. Certain countries around the globe are actively engaged in the practice of banning news and specific websites which can be circumvented with a proper VPN. That by itself is already extremely important, but going even further, VPN services allow for less invasive advertising while browsing data privacy, and more by changing your digital location. This can even provide you with more content on video streaming services like Netflix due to the specific licensing contracts that they hold with other providers. And overall, the value of a VPN is off the charts. 
For the sake of time, I'll leave it there, but I'm happy to say that Surfshark is offering 83% off and a three full months free if you click the link down below in the description using promo code Echelon. Again, that's 83% off and three full months free using the link down below and code Echelon. Big thank you to them for sponsoring the channel. Okay, most of you probably already know this if you follow the industry at all, but for those that don't, Ubisoft has been investing heavily into blockchain startups all around the world. They have this division called the Innovation Lab or something like that. I did an entire video on this topic before in the past where they dump money into a widespread of NFT or crypto related companies, not just those, but a lot of those. And they are basically doubling down that blockchain based play to earn economies will be an integral part of their future. Fun fact here, the most notorious and at one time successful play to earn economy, Axie Infinity, has collapsed. After sweeping through the Philippines and reaching a high of over 30 cents per token, the bottom has fallen out because it's a pseudo Ponzi scheme reliant on fresh players entering in perpetuity or it collapses, and the value has fallen by 99%. Play to earn doesn't work, it probably never will, but even if it did, it pollutes and bastardizes the concept of video games to a point where they will be unrecognizable. Bots, spam, exploitation, metamechanical abuse, you name it. Ubisoft? I guess they want to see that happen, because they've been pushing for it, even having the nerve to say that their community just doesn't understand when they receive backlash. And the culmination of it all is a demo test for Ghost Recon Breakpoint, where they tested digits, NFTs, they just didn't want to use the buzzword, through a program called Quartz. This was an absolute failure, with items that required 600 hours, or something like that, to even receive. No discernible benefit whatsoever when it came to just having regular exclusive cosmetics, and the gaming community laughed at them without remorse. Good. But what's next? Next is a flurry of allegations in 2020 and 2021 that allege Ubisoft had widespread workplace abuse, leading to the dismissal and voluntary exit of multiple executives, eventually, ultimately, to a point where Ubisoft acknowledged publicly that they had botched the entire thing. Some of these accusations were more severe than others, but the sheer volume was what really did them in. Now, you would be forgiven for saying, wait a second, Activision Blizzard is worse if that's how you're going to measure these things. And sure, maybe, that could be true. But just because Activision Blizzard dominated more headlines doesn't mean that Ubisoft wasn't just as bad. Ubisoft is smaller. It doesn't have Blizzard under its wing, which became the focal point for some of the worst headlines on its own. And alongside everything else, they began to experience a mass exodus of developers in the aftermath. Losing that many workers, which was unprecedented on, in all honesty, under such conditions as well, it's one factor in a never-ending jet stream of issues. Next, and probably the most compelling for a lot of people, we can just go by the data. According to Rave Analytics, Ubisoft is now the most hated gaming brand on the planet. 23 countries have Ubisoft as the most hated video game specific entity, heavily concentrated in Europe, where the company primarily operates. The number of countries in which Ubisoft is hated the most is overwhelming. 23 of them, and surpasses the next in line, Capcom, which is most hated in 9 countries, by more than double. That title used to be held by EA, but like I said, EA went sort of quiet. They have their memes, people still dislike them, obviously, but they aren't out here making headlines and stirring the pot. Ubisoft? Quite the opposite. Another one of their most recent blunders, which earned them some time in the spotlight, even if it wasn't strictly speaking a publisher issue, was when a couple of developers decided to complain about the UI design in Elden Ring. This one was kind of funny because the memes it spawned were priceless, yes, but there was some real animosity as a result because the minimalist approach of Elden Ring, containing one of the most dedicated, passionate, and vocal fan bases of any franchise ever, was adored and admired by a great many people. Ubisoft is not exactly known for their incredible UI design, and the resulting backlash put even more attention on this fact, enduring for weeks as they tried to showcase Skull and Bones. Finally, I'm actually kind of excited for that game, but anyway, it basically lived up to the memes about how bad their UI has become. Still, that one was nothing major, but most recently, a couple of days ago, Ubisoft really stepped in it, and probably solidified their standing for quite some time. The focal point is Assassin's Creed, and all of this comes just a couple weeks into a 15-year franchise anniversary celebration. What a way to get some publicity. Here's what happened. First came the Steam sale, the Steam summer sale. Lots of games at a hefty discount. Amazing. One of them was Assassin's Creed Liberation, 75% discounted, I believe, but next, Ubisoft decided to disable some of their older games, including Assassin's Creed Liberation. At first, there was a very ominous message put forward on Steam. Quote, At the request of the publisher, Assassin's Creed Liberation is no longer available for purchase on Steam, and more importantly, please note that this title will not be accessible following September 1st, 2022. End quote. That's 
Wow. For some people, it may not seem like a big deal, but it is because it plays into the idea of ownership for digital media. This was a single player game that was on sale up until right before this happened, where you were going to buy something and then everyone would lose access to it completely because Ubisoft decided to just void their ability to play. Everyone kind of knows that it's possible. We all tacitly agree to it in the terms of service, but to see it actually happen, you can't really unring that bell. Looping back to one of my initial points, digital ownership is now the supermajority of all players. Entire consoles are now launching as digital only, and though it is technically legal for them to do this kind of thing, it's a sort of mutual understanding that going down that road is eventually going to cause some severe problems. Ubisoft was the company that decided, wholeheartedly, to kick it all off, but rest assured this won't be the last example. Now, I need to also clarify that this isn't the only title affected. Splinter Cell Blacklist will have its DLC disabled and its online features taken down. Assassin's Creed 2, 3, Brotherhood, and I think Re Revelations will also have their DLC disabled and online features revoked. And this isn't just a removal of from the store, right? Like you can't purchase it anymore. It's a revocation of the actual content. Quite a few people are going to lose access to the things that they paid for, and I'm not going to sit here and pretend it's some astronomical number, not that many people still play those games, right? They don't. But some do, and they purchase that product legally with an expectation that they would be able to use it and play it. For Assassin's Creed Liberation, Ubisoft reacted quickly. Sure, their social media post is restricted and can't be commented on, because that's an excellent feature Twitter has created that totally isn't just a mechanism to dodge criticism by major brands, but they clarified and seemingly reversed their position of disabling the entire game. The Steam description has since been changed, but the veil itself has already been pierced. People are not going to just forget that this happened, and many of them are now painfully aware of exactly what Ubisoft can do to their digital purchases at any point in time. All of this requires a tangent. A while back, I created a video called Pirated Games Are Superior Products, and this kind of reinforces my logic as to why. Pirated games, first and foremost, are available without any sort of DRM. DRM software, digital rights management, often has an adverse effect on video game performance, FPS, etc., and thus, in many circumstances, pirated copies of single-player games are just technically and factually superior. However, the second and more important angle has now been demonstrated by Ubisoft as their reputation declines in spectacular fashion. Non-pirated game copies through Uplay or Steam or whatever it is can be revoked, not just disabling future purchases, actually fully revoked and made unplayable by internal corporate decision making. They disable something, they take something offline, and you're shit out of luck. Sure, they backtracked on part of this with Liberation, but it's still a thing that can happen, while pirated games on your own hard drive are yours to keep until you decide you are done with it. Knowing that to be true, pirated games are, in fact, superior products with superior benefits, Ubisoft is now taking the entire spotlight on that topic, because they decided to follow up the Assassin's Creed 15th anniversary celebration. <laughs> Scratch that, actually, no. They aren't doing this as a follow-up, they are announcing this right during the celebration, for whatever reason. Also, the Steam Summer Sale just happened by disabling a bunch of content people paid for. Genius. There are a host of other issues and small-scale controversies for Ubisoft, but the bottom line is that they have eclipsed Activision Blizzard and even Electronic Arts as the most hated publisher on Earth. What's to be done? Not really sure. I know a lot of people are probably going to start pirating more of their games, which is really just a referendum on their corporate decision-making process more than anything else, but outside of that, I really don't know. To be clear, Ubisoft has a legal right, as far as I know, to do this. It sucks, but they can do it. It's a function of just the distribution mechanism and their policies. But they also balance that right against the community's right to stop supporting them and to hate them. Will it happen? Probably not. But they have rapidly accelerated as a frontrunner in the gaming Olympics of who can be the worst. So I thought I'd make a video. But yeah, that's it. If you want support, please check out the links down below, primarily Patreon and Locals, plus another YouTuber to check out, merchandise, social media, Surfshark, and more, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.